Beyond Good and Evil? What's that? You younger viewers might be asking. I have never heard of that because it's unrelated to vaping or TikToks. Well, gather round, stupid kids, and I'll tell you a tale of- No, not that close, I need to maintain deniability. There are many things you may take for granted in this day and age, but there was once a time when Nintendo was best known as a playing card company, when Sony was best known for portable cassette players, and when Ubisoft made games that weren't shit. Believe it or not, there was once a time when they made quality artistically driven single player games like Prince of Persia Sands of Time, Splinter Cell Chaos Theory, and of course Beyond Good and Evil, a game beloved in the memories of retro gamers that still hasn't yielded a sequel. Which is surprising for Ubisoft, considering that all their other successful IPs have been milked all the way to their jaded non-functioning tear ducts. But apparently it hasn't been for want of intention. They put out a new trailer for the sequel every few years to get everyone excited, before mysteriously going quiet about it again with the regularity of the fucking tides. All pre-rendered teasers, of course, so we still know as much about their concrete intentions for the game as we do about the dark side of Ganymede. But the fact Ubisoft apparently still recognises the nostalgia value makes it odd there's never been a proper remaster of Beyond Good and Evil. Well, there was an HD release for consoles in 2011, so check that out if you still have an Xbox 360 or a PS3 in the room where you also keep your mangle and your spinning jenny and your fucking time machine. To refresh my memory of it this week, I had to fall back on the slightly dodgy Steam port of the original PC version, which runs astonishingly well for a 20-year-old game in that it actually runs, albeit admired by a ton of early 3D graphics teething troubles, the odd glitchy visual effect, and being apparently mystified by the notion that we might want to look up and down on occasion. Still, these pseudo-cartoony graphics have aged surprisingly well as long as you don't pay too much attention to the facial animation, and notice that the protagonist blankly frowns her way through every cutscene, like she stopped listening five minutes ago and is annoyed that she's still got the magic roundabout theme tune stuck in her head. Said protagonist is Jade, a spunky young photographer, reporter, adventurer, assassin, orphanage operator with a passion for justice and way too many fucking jobs, living on an idyllic world where humans coexist with sentient pigs, cows and walruses. And if anyone asks what bacon cheeseburgers are made from, you're expected to subtly break eye contact and change the subject. Jade's excellent time management skills catch the eye of an underground resistance group who recruit her to join the fight against the evil authority that oppresses the planet under an iron fist. Well, they say they are, but they don't seem to be doing much actual oppressing on the ground. Sure, they put soldiers and propaganda screens everywhere, but seem to mostly leave everyone to go about their normal business of wandering about, racing, delivering all their voice acted lines with slightly too much enthusiasm, and in Jade's case, smacking the absolute bacon cheeseburgers out of things with a big green stick. Part of why Beyond Good and Evil is remembered so fondly is that it was ahead of its time in so many ways. It mastered the art of being incapable of picking one core gameplay mechanic to focus on way before that was the fucking norm. In brief, it's a stealth action adventure beat em up racing photography simulator. And what impressed at the time is the way it balanced all of that and kept it all functional, with the strong characters and setting putting the baby oil on the nude wrestling match. But note my very deliberate use of the word functional rather than outstanding. Driving the hovercraft around is probably the strongest element, it's as fundamentally smooth and entertaining as pushing a disembodied tit around an air hockey table, and the race missions make the most of it, even if the announcer deliriously screaming all his lines makes me feel uncomfortably like I'm riding Bay Area public transport, but let's just say the other elements certainly don't suffer from being over-designed. The combat never evolves past twat thing with stick, occasionally pushing in a new direction to twat different thing with stick, and more could have been done with the photography mechanic that the game revolves around, maybe something like what Dead Rising would later do, a watchy points if you catch a beautiful shot of your pig dad doing one of his hilarious farts, all of which is doing a very spirited can-can around the uncomfortable truth that occurs while replaying Beyond Wooden Weevils, that for all its nostalgic reputation, it doesn't actually hold up so well. Part of the problem is that every inch of the game screams cutbacks. Ambitions very obviously had to be scaled down mid-development. The pearls are what give that away. Every challenge in the game is rewarded with pearls that you use to buy upgrades for your vehicle that open up more of the map. That's the core around which all progress happens, it's basically a more diegetic version of collecting stars in Mario 64. But at certain points you beat a story mission and the game goes, good job, here's 15 fucking pearls to buy the next upgrade. Which you're getting because we love you so much and not because we had to cut the 15 extra side quests and challenges you were originally supposed to do to get them. Kinda wonder why they didn't just reduce the amount of pearls the upgrade cost. Maybe it was the sign painter's day off. Here's your new upgrade that grants your hovercraft the ability to fly. Wow, bet this'll open up all kinds of interesting new places to visit. Yes, if by all kinds you mean one, and by interesting new you mean identical to a previous place except all the enemies drop three pearls each. Because we're really tired and we just want you to get this fucker over with before you ruin your suspension driving over one of our vast plot holes. Another symptom of the cut downness, so many characters and situations are just kinda there, lacking proper introductions, so most of the plot twists land like watery cow pats. Hey, the regime that has been obviously evil in what few direct encounters you've had is actually evil. Look. Oh, so it is. What a dramatic turn of events that was. I think the reason why the sequel announcement caused such excitement, all 19 times it happened, is that the original is rife with unrealised potential. Great music setting and characters, but it's like you're only glimpsing it through the holes in a pair of raggedy old underpants. Maybe they keep flaking on the sequel because expectations only get higher the more nostalgia blind we get over time. Let's just move on. Let's just say something is Beyond Good and Evil 2. Horizon Zero Dawn, there you go. You're Beyond Good and Evil 2 now. And Keener Bridge of Spirits, you're Beyond Good and Evil 3. Boy, this is easy. It's like the end of Spartacus with slightly more masculine trousers. <laughs> 
2024 is here, which means new year, new you. No matter what your resolution may be, make sure you look good while doing it with our brand new line of second wind hats, hoodies, t-shirts, and more over at Shark Robot. Want to lose that belly fat? Wear your fully ramblematic hoodie and laugh at an industry that never learns anything. Tee hee hee. Oh, my sides. Planning to eat healthier? Cook up a meal fit for Dabarella Yeatster and an entire D&D group with your adventure is nigh jumper. Want to read more books? Go to the theater in your backdrop t-shirt. Movies, they're just like books, but better. Want your voice to sound more like Frost's? Well, that's probably not going to happen, but look over there. It's a cold take hat. Head over to sharkrobot.com slash second dash wind or click on the link in the description to check out all the new merch today. Act fast because some of it is only available for a limited time, just like our fragile lives floating on a rock in a void of nothingness. How peaceful. Ha, ha, ha.